Hey everybody, I'm Tim here with Foundations Olmec Claro. You're watching Cigars Daily. Get more out of this and all our videos when you watch them on CigarsDailyPlus.com where you'll find extra content and coupon codes and you can even leave your rating for cigars right next to mine under each review video. Nobody puts history and heritage into the name of their cigars like Nick Malilo over at Foundation. Aside from being known for being sort of buddy-buddy with Joe Rogan and making Joe Rogan's cigar as well, Nick has got a massive catalog with incredible blends that are all steeped in tradition, heritage, and like I said, history. This one here, the Olmec, honors the Olmec people who once lived in a region that actually famously today grows Mexican San Andreas leaf, a very popular type of leaf that's commonly used in wrapper. And certainly this cigar carries that leaf. This uses a Mexican San Andreas Claro wrapper over Nicaraguan binders and fillers. Now I told you before this like honors the Olmec people, but truly there's an incredible heritage there. Not only were the Olmecs like a people that predated the Mayans, and by the way, had a calendar and I checked, there's no like end of the world prophecies with the Olmec calendar. So nothing coming up there. At the same time, the Mexican San Andreas leaf that's grown in this area is one of the oldest types of tobaccos that's still grown today. It's a pretty incredible heritage and history. This Claro cigar right here is one of two wrappers. The other one is a dark Maduro. And what I want to see with this cigar today is what exactly has Nick offered with this new offering. It's an incredible idea for a cigar honoring a people that we don't know a tremendous amount about other than the fact that they carve these massive stone heads. But I really like the blend here. Using this Mexican San Andreas Claro wrapper and a Nicaraguan binder over fillers from the Jalapa Valley and Esteli, this cigar sounds like it should have a pretty bright and interesting flavor profile, especially when you pair it up with Nick Melillo's savant style blending. And so today I wanna see what the profile gives and kind of like, if this cigar reaches the standard balance that we've all come to expect from Foundation Cigars, and the only way to find out is with a cut in the light. The kickoff here comes with quite a bit. Very good for consistency, lots of flavor. Right at light up, of course, is one thing we're all sort of looking for here. But right out the gate, even as I'm still like holding the flame to the foot, taking my first draws, there's a really nice raisiny sweetness that comes across in this flavor. The retro hail up front spits out some cedar. There's a little bit of a spice in the back of the throat. It's a very, very slight one, just enough to sort of grip there. Not enough that I think it would offset you if you don't really like spice spice, very mild. And uh, you might wonder why I'm, I'm reviewing this massive size. It's basically a gigantic Churchill. Normally in my reviews, I review the Robusto because there's a lot to do around the Cigars Daily HQ. So we review the size as A, the most popular and the one that I've got time for. But with the Olmec, it's not a limited edition cigar. It's regular production. It did, however, hit the shelves at cigar shops across America with so much popularity that it's hard to find just about anywhere right now. And so I worked with Foundation to put this together for the review. This has already become one of my like go back to cigars. It's a cigar I find myself picking up off the shelf in the humidor more often than other cigars. It's probably a top five for me right now, but I really want to put this through the runs of the review to see what it gives. Up front, that flavor profile, like I said, nice, vibrant, has plenty going on, but let's see what develops now as we jump into the first third. Man, this first third develops nicely. And subtly, like there's not a huge change from that light up profile. Brilliant, brilliant profile. A couple new notes have made their way into the profile here. One of them is almonds, a really nice almond note along with cedar, that raisiny sweetness, and 
a little bit of, uh, of vanilla in this flavor too. These like these all together complement that sweetness really well for a profile that is earthy, but very vibrant. It comes with a lot of life. Like there's to me a lot to taste on the tongue and on the retrohale, even that spice in the back kind of dies away in the first third. So here, I'm getting a really nice flavor, but at the same time, a beautiful experience with construction on this cigar. You know, it's not altogether common for box press cigars to burn straight like this. I, I find that they tend to have burn issues for whatever reason. And this one is holding a nice long ash, has a damn near perfect draw, and the thing is just cruising with a beautiful burn. So all, it's like racking up points here in the first third, but now I wanna take this into the second third and see how it develops. Well, I've made my way all the way through the second third here. And then I was like, shoot, I need to go shoot more of this review before I get all the way into the final third because I just, I sat and enjoyed smoking this in my office so much. But the second third was an interesting part of this smoke for me. So the first third seemed like it was kind of giving a lot of that, you know, vanilla. There was some almonds in there. There was that cedar, the type of notes that can give way to my favorite graham cracker notes. Something I get so excited about. But the second third was really cedar forward. It was a earthier second third. Even the sweetness was not as pronounced, although there was relative balance of everything I got in the first third. No real changes or transitions, just a nice, consistent, well-balanced flavor that really satiates the palette, which again is Nick Melillo's like savant style blending. The dude is like the rain man of blending cigars. And there are only a few guys in the industry who are like that. The one thing I will say is that through the second third, this didn't have a lot of staying power for ash. I, I was ashing all over my desk the entire time. We get to be about a half an inch of ash and then just fall right off on my keyboard. And so if ash is important to you, Part of the cigar held a great ash, and then the second third didn't really do that. Now take a look at the wrapper on this with me. This Claro Mexican San Andreas leaf references back to the time when wrapper leaves were simpler. They called them Claro, Double Claro, Maduro, Colorado. And then we got all geeky about cigars and now there's Broadleaf and Sumatra and this Mexican San Andreas. But not all Mexican San Andreases are dark. As you can see, this is a leaf you typically see in a very dark Maduro, but this one is much lighter in color. It's not a very oily leaf. Uh, it's a little chalky almost even to the touch. Although that doesn't mean that it doesn't have incredible vibrant flavor because this one is definitely given a lot of that and true to form for foundation cigars. The branding on this just looks spectacular. Bright stands out at you and gives you that sense of heritage and history that stands behind the name of this cigar. And now I want to take it to the final third where right now it's sitting about medium strength with lots of flavor. So I want to see how much flavor we hold on to. Strength will go up a little bit. It's not something that's too much to be worried about, but let's see what holds on and what we get. And of course, what kind of score this gets as we head into the final third. What would you look at that? So this thing was holding a nice long ash that fell off. This is like the most normal part of this smoke to this point. Truthfully, it always falls off the second that I sit down here. And like all the way through the second third, no ash staying power. And then in the final third, here we are, inch and long half ash, and it just falls right off the thing. Now, the experience in the final third for flavor has been good. I mean, especially compared with a lot of other cigars that I've smoked. The only downside here is a little bit of heat, but I'm also smoking this mammoth size. At the same time, what I'm getting here is that really nice cedar, a little bit of cinnamon now comes into this. Other flavor notes get muted and that sweetness drops to the background. Overall, this cigar gave a really solid experience. Brilliant flavor, immediately light up, a little bit of a development and very consistent flavor through the bulk of the cigar. What suffers at the very end here is not much. Like there's still a lot to taste and a lot to enjoy. My final smoking time on this has been an hour and 51 minutes and my score comes out to a 91. I think the only thing that could have probably made this a little better for me is a little more diverse, like diversity in the flavor profile. But I gotta say, everything I found I loved and it had great balance. And again, a flavor that satiates the palate. One of the reasons I find myself coming back to this cigar again and again and again. But of course, the big deal here is, and what really matters is what you guys think of these. So if you've had the Olmec from Foundation, drop a comment down below and let everyone know what you think of it because we'll all learn better when we learn together. And of course, check this out on CigarsDailyPlus.com. 
Thank you all so much for watching. This is Tim signing off for Cigars Daily, and I'll see you in the comments.